Free Kesha was trending over the weekend and into the week. I don't think it is anymore. I think Kanye has sort of taken over Twitter for now. But um, Free Kesha was trending. Oh, and this isn't the wrong one. So this is what the Free Kesha thing is. Um, so we'll read through this article and kind of go through it. And there's other aspects to it that is kind of kind of shitty and it sucks and it doesn't paint Kesha out in a great way. But um, we're definitely not going to sit here and victim shame or fic- victim blame. Um, I, I definitely am someone who is a strong believer and believe all victims until, until it's proven that they are lying. So um, I'm all about that. But I am also not all about piling on and being like, fuck, fuck that guy. You know, like we got to find out what's really going on here. So. Um, the hashtag free Kesha is currently making it. Okay, hold on. Free Kesha, hashtag free Kesha movement explained as Kim Petras defends working with Dr. Luke. The hashtag free Kesha is currently making its rounds on social media again after Kim Petras defended working with Dr. Luke on Twitter last week. The free Kesha movement began after the TikTok singer came forward and first accused music producer Dr. Luke whose full name is Lucas Sebastian Gottwald, of sexual and emotional uh, abuse in 2014, which is terrible. There we go. We're fuck Dr. Luke. Tell that to the Biden victims. Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm just trying not to LOL on the bus like a crazy person. (laughs) That's okay. I was in the gym this morning, and I was gut laughing at the shit I was watching while I'm trying to do the elliptical. And, like, it was like, like it was just like abrupt and loud so i'm sure there was like another woman in there and some dude like lifting weights and i'm sure they were both startled because that's just what happens over the weekend the movement appeared to reignite when german singer songwriter kim petras defended her work with dr luke in a series of tweets that have since been deleted and one a user said stop defending dr luke in which petras allegedly replied Five million people have worked with him. Why y'all only coming for me? I have nothing to say or to be ashamed of at all. Go away. Now, uh, Twitter has gone after Kim Petras. I never even heard of Kim Petras, honestly. I don't. I don't even know who this woman is. I couldn't name you one song. Kesha, I barely know. Tick tock, band up, band, and brush my teeth with Jack Daniels or something. I remember that, um, which was a big hit, like fifteen years ago. Um, but good on her. Fuck Dr. Luke. The guy is so scummy. I trust her. Listen, I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all about like, if if that's what she said happened, that's what happened. And it's been a court case for 10 years now and she's sticking by her story. Um, you know, so I, I don't know what's going on, but you know, if that's what happened, you know, I, I'm not trying to ever say that she wasn't, you know, graped by this dude, but it's terrible. It's a terrible situation. And and Kim Petras is getting eaten up by it. The, people are going in on Kim Petras. They even dug up this uh, tweet about her supporting, um, supporting, uh, um, let me see, Kim Petras. Wait, Petras. Uh, J.K. Rowling. uh on twitter so kid so people are finding these old tweets this was back in 2020 i'm sorry i'm informed i inform myself the transphobics attacks going on in the uk right now jk rowling's excerpt being a part of it truly sorry to anybody but i hurt uh, i hurt i don't like hate i thought we could disagree and move on talking about blm that was dumb my bad so this is her response to that. That is not what she actually said. Her first response was um, she was defending uh, J.K. Rowling and people went after her fucking so hard because uh, she was defending Dr. Luke. I wish I could see it. Is this it? When I asked about working with him after past assault regu- uh, allegations, Kim remains diplomatic. I'm a big fan of his, and we write music very well together. So, yeah, it was a really good experience. Would she work with him again? 
Yeah, totally. Before I can ask the next question, Kim cuts in. I would like my fans to know that I wouldn't work with somebody I believe to be an abuser of women. Definitely not. And so basically she's saying that, uh, what's her name, is lying. Um, I, I would take that as like, I don't think he did it. So Kesha is lying. That's basically what she's saying as well. Um, agreed, Robbie. He makes such a good music, though, so it's fucking annoying. Wow, way to make me feel old. Sorry, Bon Bon. It's, we're all, it's all, old age is coming for us all, if we're lucky. Um, I'm trying to find the tweet where she defends J.K. Rowling, and how, however you feel about J.K. Rowling, you know, I'm not, you know, defending or going after her. She is considered a turf, which is the, what is that? It's, um, I can't remember what TERF stands for, but it's 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 feminist, right? It's like extreme feminist or something against trans people. And uh, so they, they, they're coming after Kim for all this shit. Today is the day we're living with Kim Petra's downfall and her stand and her stand's loss of dignity of common sense. Cheers to that. So, yeah, y you guys can see that this is a. Uh, did you know Kim Pitchers has worked with Dr. Luke more than any other artist? They have a whopping 40 songs together, all of which came out after Kesha made her claims pu uh, claims public while she was independent. And I guess this is all the songs that she's worked with. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Kim Petras thinks she's making this kind of pop music. I don't know what this is. I probably should. Know. All right, I don't know what. Uh, Kim Petras has not had uh, not a single hit to her name, even with the one of the biggest scumbag producers as her bestie. No one outside of Popper's addled, trashy nightclub twinks. Oh God, okay, we're not reading that anymore. Um, I wish I could find that Kim Petras defends J.K. Rowling. All right, whatever. We're about to move on. In any case, she's defending her, and she got her ass handed to her. Um, start your life in diapers and end in diapers. That that's basically how it works, Nader. Working at a retirement home is weird like that. It's um, it's a uh, people just revert right back to childhood. There's just like they can't walk right. They're fucking falling down all the time. They're yelling at each other. They're complaining. They're crying. I, I made someone cry the other day because she can't. She ate already. I already. I already gave her food, and then like an hour later, she came back with somebody else and was like, "Oh, I was like, hey, did you guys want to eat again? Are you guys still hungry?" And they're like both looking at me like we've been here before. And poor the one girl, called Gracie. She just looks up at me and starts tearing up. She's like, "I don't remember." eating and i was like oh god damn it and so i made her cry so it really is hard my buddy showed up to our halloween party in a diaper i asked him what it, he was he said it depends you know i've <laughs> i've tied a potato to my belt loop and um and to my to my belt in front of hanging down between my legs and and i was a dictator just so you guys know i've done that before and it was my girlfriend's at the time crackhead mother who gave me the idea. She literally smoked crack. I smoked it with her. It wasn't good. Needless to say, my girlfriend at the time was not happy. <laughs> Anyways, that's some scumbag shit right there. Um, Kesha fans reportedly came to her defense and Kesha tweets on Sunday night. Thank you. So all the, you know, her Kesha fan, her fans came to her defense and she was like, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, the hashtag free Kesha continued to trend on Monday as Kesha prepares once again to meet Dr. Luke in the ne in next year court after he filed defamation lawsuit against her. Um, so here's where it all started. At 17 years old, Kesha, whose name was Kesha, she moved from Nashville to Los Angeles to record with Dr. Luke under the Kimosabi Records, uh, his uh, record label, Kimosabi, which is a subsidiary of Sony. 
uh, and her first album was released in 2010. However, in October 2014, Kesha filed a suit against Dr. Luke, claiming that he drugged and sexually assaulted her and emotionally abused her, leading to an eating disorder. The singer asked in the suit that she be released from her contract with the record label, Dr. Luke filed a countersuit to refute the claims. In 2016, a New York Supreme Court justice denied the singer request for a preliminary injunction, which would have allowed her to record music outside the record label until the case was finalized, but she was rejected. Around this time, Kesha saw waves of support from other artists and celebrities, including Kelly Clarkson, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Sam Smith, and others, prompting the famous hashtag Free Kesha to begin trending online. In 2016, Kesha posted an Instagram photo um, caption revealing that uh, that revealed she was asked to recant her claims of rape and abuse against Dr. Lube if she wanted to be uh, out of her binding contract. So this is from her her Instagram and she said I got offered freedom if I were to lie I would have to apologize publicly and say that I, I never got raped this is what happens behind closed doors I will not take back the truth I would rather let the truth ruin my career than lie for a monster ever again <laughs> yummy <laughs> it's probably an inappropriate time to say that um, so you know that's horrible right that is terrible thing to have to live through and all she wants is freedom away from having to work with this dude um the other thing that came out was that there is records of her complaining about the incident to uh her management well before she filed a suit and nothing was done about it so she had brought this up before to her management and nothing was done so she felt like she had to take it into her own hands which absolutely honestly she should have done it right afterwards right after it happened but we all know and we're not going to victim blame or shame that a lot of the victims of, of rape end up not reporting it which it really sucks because to get that evidence you know it, they have a very short window of time so it really is a bummer, but of course, we're not going to hold that against her. It's a hard thing to have to deal with and to understand what happened. I mean, she was a young girl at the time, so I can only imagine the, the, the trauma of that situation. Kesha released her 2017 album, Rainbow, which included an, the emotional praying with Kimosabi, a praying with Kimosabi records following, followed by her fourth album, High Road, in 2020. As of today, Kesha and Dr. Luke are still enshrined in a legal battle after years of litigation between them. In July of next year, they are expected to go to court over his defamation suit against her. So there was a deposition over a defamation suit because what ended up happening is Katy Perry denies Dr. Luke raped her in an unsealed deposition. So... This is this is where things doesn't where things start to not look great for Kesha. Um, in a deposition, expert un, un excerpt unsealed on Monday, Katy Perry shot down a rumor that she was raped by Dr. Luke. The document was released as part of the producer's defamation suit against Kesha, who has accused him of raping her. So, uh, what ended up happening is Kesha texted Lady Gaga that Dr. Luke raped Katy Perry, which is, you know, it's a terrible thing to do is to lie about somebody like that if it's not true. But if it happened to her, doesn't mean she should be out there spreading that kind of rumor. Kesha's song, Praying, that came out after the whole lawsuit is so good and targeted at Dr. Luke. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's a powerful song. I've never heard it. In a deposition, uh, oh yeah, we just read it. So Dr. Luke's attorneys have also accused Kesha of circulating an allegation that he raped Perry. In her deposition, Perry had, uh, adamantly denied the rumor. Did Dr. Luke ever rape you? At the, an attorney asked. No, Perry re replied. Did Dr. Luke ever sexually assault you? Absolutely not. Did he ever give you a roofie? No. Did you have sexual relationship with Dr. Luke at all? No. A romantic relationship? No. According to the suit, Kesha sent a text message to Lady Gaga in 2016 in which she claimed Dr. Luke raped Perry. A separate deposition of Lady Gaga was also partially released on Monday in which she discussed the hearing the rumor from John 
Janik, I don't know, the CEO and, uh, and chairman of Interscope Geffen A&M Records. Lady Gaga said she was with Kesha at the time and Janik was showing support for Kesha. Uh, he said something like, I heard he raped Katie too, Lady Gaga testified. In her deposition, Perry said she has heard ja of Janik but does not know him and never made any sort of sexual allegation to him about Dr. Luke. I couldn't pick him out of a crowd, Perry testified. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, she got caught up in, in, in a lie. What? Wait, hold on. Kesha and uh, substance go together? I thought Kesha and substance abuse had more likely cop, uh, co coppling? Coppling. Coppling. I can't. I'm such an idiot. What's up, Samo? Welcome in. I, 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 this is... <laughs> This one's for you, I think. I mean, Kesha was a party girl, but she took her own substances on her own, not forced by creepiness. Yeah, exactly. Please, if you want to do drugs, do drugs if that's what you feel like you have to do. But no one should ever give you drugs without your permission. I don't care if it's weed brownie, hallucinogens, and aspirin, right? Like, fuck you. Do not give me drugs. Do not give anybody drugs without consent. It's all about consent, folks. If you're going to learn anything from the song Boobs, it's consent. <sighs> they also highlighted quotations from depositions of Kesha and her mother in support of her claim Dr. Luke did, in fact, rape Kesha in 2005. Contrary to Dr. Luke's legal team's assertions that today's um, evidentiary record reveals something Kesha doesn't want to, the public to see, Kesha has consistently requested that the evidence in the case be unsealed, while Dr. Luke has fought vigorously to keep the evidence from seeing the light of day. Her attorneys ask, uh, argued Kesha looks forward to defeating Dr. Luke's meritless $40 plus million damage claims at the summary judgment or trial. And uh, it looks like, what is this? I don't know what that is. This is the paperwork, it seems like. So, anyways. So, kind of backing up a little bit. Uh, this is back in 2020 that this happened. Trends, at, uh, uh, Free Kesha trends after judge rules her text to Lady Gaga about Dr. Luke's were defamatory. Uh, after a judge ruled the text Kesha sent to Lady Gaga, she, were, she accused Dr. Luke of raping uh Katy Perry, for, oh my god, I'm sorry that I'm fucking ruining this with my shitty reading, guys. Uh, a New York Supreme Court, so we know that. Um, I'm trying to find... Um, fans showed an overwhelm... So, like, so even though she lost in, in court of law of this... She, uh, public opinion, obviously, by your guys' reaction to all this, you know, Robbie was like, fuck Dr. Luke and, Rob, and you know, Bon Bon. Yeah, I get, you know, it, public opinion is definitely backing up Kesha. I, I, I honestly don't know what's going on. Um, there's some other things that happen as well that, um, that, that, that happen. I don't have it pulled up. Oh, yeah, I do. Here it is. So this is uh, Dr. Luke scores big victory in ongoing defamation battle with Kesha. Uh, Gotwell, the music producer, better know. Okay, we know that. Gotwell sued the singer in 2014, accusing her of defaming him by fabricating rape allegations in a bid to get out of her recording contract. Kesha has alleged that Gotwell drugged her and raped her. Yes, we know this. But where is it? The ruling on Thursday, the, we just read that too. Um, so we're going to watch, uh, this is what I want to do is watch it's this video. Day. Oh, Jesus Christ. So All right. I'm just going to mute that so we don't have to hear it. We'll look at the Volt Volkswagen brought to you by Hitler. Out of a heated case pitting pop star Kesha against a popular music producer. That's right, claiming a history of abuse, she is fighting to get out of her recording contract and as support from her fellow stars rolls in this morning, the man at the center of this dispute is speaking out for the first time. Here's NBC's Joe Fryer. 
The high-profile court battle between a well-known pop star and hit-making producer is turning into what some are calling a trial by Twitter. Kesha now getting a flurry of support from fellow singers and celebrities after her stinging defeat Friday. A judge denied the singer's bid to be released from a recording contract with Dr. Luke, the producer she's currently suing alleging sexual assault. Her allies took to Twitter using the hashtag FreeKesha, Ariana Grande. So obviously she's getting, I saw this episode of the Today Show, I think probably, this was back in what, 2016? I would cough, cough, believe all women to move on, to move my propaganda. Listen, I'm, uh, I, 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 I don't take this shit lightly. If someone claims that they were sexually assaulted, I think we should take it as serious, as serious as possible until until all the evidence comes out, uh, I'm all about, you know, you're not guilty until proven, you're not, wait, you're innocent until proven guilty is, is the thing I was trying to say. So I don't know if Dr. Luke did this shit. Um, and, but I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, she's lying. I just don't know what's going on, but we should definitely take it as serious as we can. And that's when we find out about the poop in the bed. <laughs> Well, Grande tweeting, my heart is with Kesha Rose and Lady Gaga writing, I can say truly I am in awe of your bravery. Taylor Swift is even donating $250,000 to help with legal bills. It's a lot of Swifty Kesha money. is going to have a difficult road ahead of her to win in the court of law. However, she seems to be winning big time in the court of public opinion. In 2014, Kesha sued Dr. Luke, the man who discovered her, claiming he sexually, physically, verbally, and emotionally abused her. In the lawsuit, she alleges Dr. Luke continuously forced himself on her while she was intoxicated and drugged. Monday, Horrible. Dr. Luke also took to Twitter, echoing denials he's filed in court, saying, I didn't rape Kesha and I have never had sex with her. Kesha and I were friends for many years and she was like my little sister. In a statement, his attorney I mean, accused he Kesha does look like a creep. of using a vicious a smear campaign to ruin his reputation for financial gain while failing to support their claims. Dr. Luke, whose real name is Lucas Gottwald, is suing Kesha, claiming she made up the allegation so she could get out of her recording contract with him and Sony Music. Kesha's attorneys argue her career is at a standstill because she won't work with Dr. Luke as her contract requires. But his attorneys say Kesha is already free to record and release music without working with Dr. Luke as a producer if she doesn't want to. Any claim that she isn't free is a myth. So she is allowed. Sony is holding her to her contract. She has to fulfill her contracts. But they didn't say that she had to work with Dr. Luke. She just, to be honest, like, I, I can see from her perspective, like, I don't even want anything to do with his company. She signed to his company, which is a subsidiary of Sony. So she still has to release music under his label. And, you know, sexual assault is not about is rarely about sex it's, it's more about power right and and that's just another way of holding power over somebody and it could just be it, it, even if it's not working with dr luke it's making him money and and she still has to release it under that name it's you know that power over somebody that's that's really you know i could see it from that point so you know even though she's free to work with whoever she wants, she's still under the umbrella and under the, the hands of Dr. Luke. And, and, you know, I get that. If you're a victim of this shit and, and Dr. Luke is out there fucking, you know, making money off of your art, I totally understand that she wants nothing to do with it. But the question is, what happens when he wins? We'll never get over the stigma of what he says. He what he says, he says, TikTok logic. But why would you want to work for Sony when they are protecting him? Yeah, and that too. That's a great point, Robbie. You're absolutely right about that. And they still employ him. He's still on, you know, he's still on the payroll. And for some music has to be good. Kesha music is not slapping like that. She just can't pull off Lauren Hill to keep it. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Kesha, you know, but um, it's still it's still from a compassionate human level. She doesn't deserve to be held captive under a regime that she feels 
is her oppressor, you know? Like, I don't feel like that's uh, uh, right. Somebody should have learned from the Prince logic and Molly Ray, uh, Molly, Miley Ray Cyrus. Anybody knows about Miley, Ray, uh, Miley Cyrus uh, is not her real name. Oh, it's Mallory Cyrus. Oh, well, there you go. I don't... Yeah, clearly you weren't drunk white girl in 2007. <laughs> Was that when she came out? Holy shit. Is that how long it's been? Holy shit, dude. That's a long time ago. The bitter dispute has sparked several lawsuits in three different states with both sides digging in, now fighting in and out of the courtroom. For today, Joe Fryer, NBC News, Los Angeles. This is complicated. Let's bring in Lisa Bloom, today's legal analyst. Lisa, good morning. Good morning. morning. Let's just be clear about what this is and what this isn't. This is, we haven't gone through trial. This isn't right. the end of the case. This is the beginning of the case. So, she so uh, what this person is about to say is, I think is really important. Um, and it should be noted as such. She's saying, he abused me, I don't want to work with him, therefore I want out of my recording contract. And Sony is saying, you don't have to work with him, but you do have to be bound by your contract. So importantly, this is a preliminary injunction hearing, which is a very early hearing in the case. It's not trial yet, and her lawyer had to meet a very high legal bar, and the judge said he didn't meet it. The claims weren't specific enough, and he didn't bring forth evidence in support of her allegations. This is just the first step, and she lost this first legal battle. It doesn't right. prevent her from going forward with her case. Right. And what happens... Which doesn't look good, right? She doesn't have enough evidence to prove what she's trying to prove to get out of the case. I mean, she lost this. So, I mean, it sucks, but it doesn't look good. But you could also chop it up to, you know, somebody got paid off or, I don't know, misogyny. I don't know. You could chop it up to a lot of different things. But um, it's not great when it comes to a court of law that you that she lost this early on. She's politely trying to find a way to a way not to Kanye West exit of her contract. <clears throat> I just ordered my ugly Christmas sweater, put it in, in the selfies. All right, we'll look at that. Thank you, Naders. I'm glad you got that in before the party. To these these claims that she makes of, of all kinds of abuse by Dr. Luke, what happens now in the court process with those? She, does she have to prove them? Yes. Well, eventually there will be a trial, and then her attorney can bring forth witnesses and evidence, and you know any corroboration that they have. But at this point, the judge said, "Look, there's no irreparable injury because you don't have to work with Dr. Luke anymore. All that she's really claiming is that maybe Sony wouldn't promote her in the future." The judge says that's not enough at this early stage. On those allegations of sexual assault, uh, Dr. Luke, the mm -hmm. producer says he, she gave back. a statement Kesha did. not enough at this early stage on those allegations of sexual assault eventually there will be a trial and then her attorney can bring forth witnesses and evidence and you know any corroboration that they have but at this point the judge said look there's no irreparable injury because you don't have to work with dr. Luke anymore all that she's really claiming is that maybe Sony wouldn't promote her in the future the judge says that's not enough at this early stage on those allegations so so they're saying that what she's saying isn't good enough to get out of her contract. I mean, that still sucks. That's still terrible. Again, going back to the idea of being under, you know, the umbrella. Robbie made a good point. Like, why would she want to work with a company that's protecting Dr. Luke? I mean, and if Dr. Luke is, you know, as terrible as she claims, then... You know, it, it's going to be terrible that Sony protected him for all these years. It's not going to look good on Sony at all. And I feel like this was before Me Too really took off, right? Like, I feel like Dr. Luke would have been super canceled and dropped from Sony if this was a little bit late. If this all happened, if this all came to light, you know, at a later time, I feel like Dr. Luke would have lost a job. And then again, if she was making the whole thing up, then so Sony's in this weird damned if you do, damned if you don't position. Um, but they definitely want their the contract to be fulfilled. And um, I, I can see how that's a big blow. I wonder if she's still bound to Sony in some way. I think she is. Yeah, because because um, the trial is next year the in, the real trial happens next year. So I'm pretty sure she's still bound to Sony. 
Or maybe she doesn't have any new albums and controversy is going to get her name still buzzing. That's a possibility, too. I mean, that is a possibility. It's an ugly possibility, but it is a possibility. Allegations of sexual assault. Uh, Dr. Luke, the producer, says he, she gave a statement, Kesha did under oath at a previous deposition. This is it. Saying it didn't happen. Is right. that a problem for her? It's a huge problem for her. She was an adult when she made Let's that statement. Let's play that now, again. That sexual assault survivors do tend to. Does she have to prove them? Yes. Well, eventually there will be a trial, and then her attorney can bring forth witnesses Let's hear that and again, evidence folks. and you know, any corroboration that they have. But at this point, the judge said, look, there's no irreparable injury because you don't have to work with Dr. Luke anymore. All that she's really claiming is that maybe Sony wouldn't promote her in the future. The judge says that's not enough at this early stage. On those allegations of sexual mm -hmm. assault, uh, Dr. Luke, the producer, says he, she gave a statement, Kesha did under oath at a previous deposition, yeah. saying it didn't happen. Is right. that a problem for it's her? It's a huge problem for her. She was an adult when she made that statement. It's a huge problem that she was under oath, under oath in a deposition and said that it didn't happen. Ay ay ay. So... What do we have here? We have, she, she lied about Katy Perry. She's under oath. And, and, and again, we're not victim blaming or shaming. I'm just stating what's happening and how that could shape. What did, what did she say? Oh, um, she, she, she under oath. She said that, the, that she, she wasn't raped. Here, we'll play it again for Robbie. wouldn't promote her in the future. The judge says that's not enough at this early stage. On those allegations of sexual assault, uh, Dr. Luke, the producer, says he, she gave a statement, Kesha did under oath at a previous deposition, yeah. saying it didn't happen. Is right. that a problem for her? It's a huge problem for her. She was an adult when she made that statement. Now, we know that sexual assault survivors do tend to say, no, it didn't happen before they come forward with their claims, but it's still very tough for her to overcome. Is it a problem for her that she apparently never went to law enforcement and reported it? I think that's less of a problem. We know that most rape victims don't go to law enforcement, and she did bring these claims forward with her lawyer in these actions. And she told management stuff. There's there's documents I found of of her, you know, people testifying saying that the, before she even brought up the the cases, you know, before she even filed a lawsuit, that she was, uh, you know, she was assaulted. So there is evidence that she was talking about it to management and lawyers before everything even happened. But she is under oath saying that she didn't, that none of it happened. And, you know, that's not going to look good. But I think she made a really good point. Quickly, she followed up and said, you know, that's normal for victims to to deny it. it, it it's, it's really common. And as sad as that is, that that, that can happen. And uh, again, they brought up the idea of her not going to the police directly after the assault occurred. You know, that that, you know, that's not as big as a problem as her lying or not lying, but telling under oath that it never happened. Uh, no, wash your hands with her and keep it moving. She was giving us signs in her songs. Don't stop. Let it pop. She's going to keep lying until the sun drops. See, I'm not going to sit there and say she's lying. You know what's starting too is uh, the Tory Lanez and Megan trial is going on. Uh, it could be, but I don't think that she was. I don't know. I don't know, Naders, if it's Stockholm syndrome. I'm confused. Why did she say that at a deposition? Um, I don't know. I don't know why she would say that at a deposition. She must have been asked. Um, honestly, there are enough women centers for women to go to bring up abuse and sexual harassment for her to do so. Not so many for men. No, but mostly most of the most of the victims in sexual assault are are women committed by men, right? So. I can see why there would be more resources for women considering the fact that men do most of the raping. Um, but I don't know if that's Stockholm Syndrome. It might be. Or, or you know, or she's lying. Hi, all. I'm here for some 5 a.m. tea. Oh, we're just talking about, uh, oh, vaginas. <laughs> yeah, and and that's like the shittiest part of it, you know? that's the biggest part is like men do most of the terrible things to, to women. And, uh, we're just bigger and, uh, we have more,
physical strength than most women. It's, it, it, you know, I, I get why the resources are skewed towards women. Say that in a women's prison. <laughs> well, I don't know. Women's prison isn't the majority of the women population, so my wife is 10 times stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie don't talk back is what he's saying. Robbie does not talk back. She could bench she could bench me one handed probably. Don't fall for the propaganda, sir. Most police officers will not believe that men have been raped or abused. The commas and and can sentence will go up, man, because you're a man. Yeah, but okay. Men get sexually assaulted all the time, but who's it by, Samo? Who's sexually assaulting men? I just want to see it in the chat. Who is sexually assaulting men? And 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 that's that's your answer to that one, I guess. Zippy zipper. So okay, so just so we can catch up, we'll we'll we'll, we'll put it back just a little bit so y'all can kind of get caught up. Zippy zipper is just popping in, so. She's really claiming is that maybe Sony wouldn't promote her in the future. The judge says that's not enough at this early stage. On those allegations of sexual assault, uh, Dr. Luke, the producer, says he, she gave a statement, Kesha did under oath at a previous deposition, yeah. saying it didn't happen. Is right. that a problem for that's her? It's a huge problem for her. She was an adult when she made that statement. Now is we that know Carson that sexual Daly? assault survivors do tend to say, that, hold no, on, was that it didn't Carson happen. Daly in the background? She was an adult when she made that statement. Is that Carson Daly? That looks like Carson Daly back here. He's just hanging out, like, wiping the fucking sleep out of his eyes. That definitely looks like Carson Daly. It's a huge problem for her. She Look at him. <laughs> that looks like Carson Daly. He does work. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Thank you. I, I You know, I know where you're coming from, Samo. I know where you're coming from, but the, but even men who are sexually assaulted are mostly sexually assaulted by other men. Especially if you're talking about like prison situations, it's men do most of the raping, and and you know that's the horrible reality of being a dude with a a peener. Uh, that's just what happens, and it's terrible. And you know that's it's good that that these things come to the light and so we can see it. And so we can, you know, get, get that shit out of here and start working towards, you know, getting really stigmatizing it and making it as bad as it is. Whereas, you know, in the past, it's sort of got swept under the rug. Right. I mean, think about mad men. If anybody ever saw mad men, it's just like, Dudes just slapping ass, grabbing tits, you know, and getting women pregnant at work and just like, ah, fuck you. He's <laughs> like, who cares? Hard to rape with a vagina, just a reality, not saying never, but well, and, and then women also sexually assault men who, uh, you know, you find this all the time where teachers take advantage of young men, take advantage of young men. I know I had a teacher that I wish she would have took advantage of me when I was a kid, when I was a young man, but um, that's disgusting, and that's horrible, too. It's horrible, too. Um, even though, even if it's a 16-year-old boy who's swacking some 24-year-old teacher, that's still, it's wrong, it's illegal, it's disgusting. It's not okay. Uh, and now women want testosterone and wonder why they're... <laughs> Yeah, if women want testosterone, let them have testosterone. I could give a fuck less. You want to cut off your boobies and do stuff? Great. Do your thing, baby. Do you, boo. No, no, no. Propaganda look on the other side of the looking glass. Okay, so we're going to ignore that these teachers are going around raping kids. No, no. And, and yeah, I just said that. I'm not saying that, but the majority, the majority of the raping goes on from men. I mean, I know Google's not the greatest resort, but are men the I'm just terrible at this. Here's a 2010 rape by gender. Oh good. This is great. I love this. And why do we always end up in these fucking <laughs> God damn it? It's terrible. It's just a horrible thing, and, and I, I'm sure this is triggering 
uh, if, 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 if I, I hope that I'm not triggering anybody. I know that it's ter- it's a hard subject to talk about. Younger people are at higher risk of sexual violence. So the majority of sexual assaults are victims under 30. Ages 12 to 34 are the highest risk. Those, okay. What what's What is this, rain? This is not even like a thing. I guess we'll go to Wikipedia. Um... Let's see, 10.2% of girls and 5.1% of boys reported having ever been physically forced to have sexual intercourse when they did not want to. 2010 study of heterosexual uh, couples where sexual coercion coercion existed, 45% reported female victimization, 30% reported male victimization, 20% reported uh, reciprocal victimization. Ooh, what is that? Is that like you just keep doing it? I I, I get my testosterone the old-fashioned way. That's right. From, from sucking dick. <laughs> from sucking dick. I don't know. Okay, rape by females by males. And then rape by females by females. Whoa. Rape by males, males. Rape by males by females. Here's the one. So male victims and sexual abuse of females often face societal, political, and legal double standards, which is kind of true. Uh, some cases in the United States have received increased attention and sparked awareness within the population, sometimes referred to as made-to-penetrate cases by CDC. Uh, male rape victims are forced to engage in penetration of the female without proper consent. In many cases, the male victims are under the influence of drugs or being held in a life-threatening position. The case of Sierra Ross, sexual assault of a man in Chicago gained national headlines, and Ross was convicted of aggravated criminal threatening, uh, sexual abuse and armed robbery with a bail set of $75,000. Similar case included James Landreth, who was made to penetrate a female acquaintance in a hotel room while incapacitated from drinking, along with his rapist citing the the fact that she was pregnant to advise him not to struggle. This might hurt the baby. Oh, gross. Ugh, this is not great. Uh, plus, you got to understand law enforcement controls the statistics and stats, just like Je- just like the, that Jeffrey Dahmer. If it doesn't sound good, you won't get caught and it won't get reported. I know, and that's the crazy thing, right? It's like the idea of how many unarmed black folks actually get murdered by the police every year. Um, is there any statistics that we can actually trust? You know, the one thing that. Uh, who was the she she she's transgender now but she was a whistleblower was it it wasn't snowden it was the other one who exposed the iraq war and exposed and did this information dump where it was where we found out that the numbers were skewed of how many people actually died uh and how many people died in the war how many people how many casualties of war there was um there was a huge leak and what we found out is that they were telling us one thing and what was actually happening was another. So if you think about it in those terms, that's such a macro level, right? And then you shrink that down into, I mean, this is, I mean, that's, I mean, we're still talking about if, if numbers can get skewed on that level of national security of, of, uh, of, how we go out and commit atrocities and how we go out and do these regime changes and they skew those numbers. What does that mean that they're doing within our own, you know, basically urban military now that our police forces have fucking tanks? Um, Again, I'm not anti-cop, but there is fuckery and there's terrible people in the, in the police force. And there is a systematic, uh, 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 systematic cover-ups constantly, people getting each other's back. It's a fraternity where where good cops are good cops, but they might have a bad apple, but they're still covering for that bad apple. And that's where you get this whole idea that all cops are bad, and, you know, it doesn't matter if the Nazi didn't want to do it, it's still he joined because, he, you know, he felt like he didn't have a choice, but he still is doing it. Um, so 
if they are going to skew the numbers on a world scale like that, what are the numbers here? You know, what are they what are they covering up? And we know that police cover shit up. We know that the, the that the, they got each other's back. So I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying that numbers are going to be skewed to fit uh, agendas, to fit narratives, to fit, you know, election times. Um, and it's very hard to get information that's correct. And then you have people like Ben Shapiro who are saying that, well, oh, there was only 20 people killed by unarmed black people, 20 unarmed black people killed, you know, in the year 20, in 2019. Uh, and, and people are acting like black people are just getting mowed down in the streets. Well, where'd you get those numbers? I think he said it's like a Harvard study. And it's like, where are you getting, where are they getting their numbers? Who's funding these numbers? Where is this coming from? That's the whole thing that's going on right now is, is is that we're flooded with all this information, misinformation, disinformation, which is very different. Um, misinformation and disinformation are two different things. And I think it's mostly disinformation to keep us sort of in this uh, malaise, right? Like we're just sort of... Uh, we're in this cloud, this hazy cloud where we can't really tell what's real and what's not anymore. And it's just another way to consolidate power. Because if you don't know what's really happening, if we can't get real numbers, if we can't get real statistics, then then they can just sort of make up whatever narrative they want. They can tell us who the enemy is. They can tell us who the our, our friends are. You know, it's funny that Ukraine became our, our best friends uh, as of, you know, earlier this year, but before that, they were the biggest and <laughs> most corrupt state with, uh, with human trafficking and Nazis that there ever was <clears throat> coming from the, the New York times saying all this shit for years. And then all of a sudden the narrative changes. So if you don't have <clears throat> solid information, if you don't have education, um, then you can be told whatever the fuck you want. And it's the same like how there's a small group of people in Texas who fucking feel like they can leave out certain aspects of slavery and certain aspects of history and certain aspects of uh, indigenous people. <laughs> Excuse me. To push, to push a narrative, to keep American morale high or whatever the fucking case is. So we don't know what real and what's not. And that's what fucking sucks. Um, uh, I mean, let's talk about a famous rapper that went on Instagram full blown out, admitted to raping guys and drugging guys and nothing happened. What the fuck was that? Like Canada not having sex offender list. <laughs> Is that true? They know, but doesn't let the public. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, that could be. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to do it. I mean, that's what's interesting about here in America is that you can go online and you can put in your area code and they will show you the little red dots of all. I did that the other day and there's like, there's not that many. Surprisingly, we live out kind of in the country. Surprisingly, not that many sexual offenders. There's like one or two in, in the neighborhood over there. <clears throat> so. That's interesting that they keep that. I, I would love for Bon Bon. I, I think there's a website that shows us where sex... Okay. Thank you, Bon Bon. Yeah, I appreciate you, Bon Bon, because I needed to... Because uh, uh, I was I was actually calling upon you. Please call them Johnny Fives to make the 80s happy. What does that mean? Uh, taking over for my uh, account right now, Kanye West, what do you have to say about Ben Shapiro? <laughs> oh, shit. Yo, <laughs> he started quoting, he started quoting Owen Benjamin jokes. Oh my God, that shit, it was funny, but it was terribly racist <laughs> against the Jewish folks. Uh, but it was, it was funny, um, but horrible. It was terrible. Uh, I think that, I think there's a website, that, yeah, okay, uh, Cardi B admit. oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, Cardi B does, yeah, that's true, right, Cardi B admits that, that she, she, but then she changed her whole attitude, right, at some point, but there's a video of her saying, yeah, I did that shit, right, isn't there a video? Cardi B admits to drugging 
and raping guys is it raping though i think you just <clears throat> yeah she used drugs to rob men so maybe it was just to rob them not rape them <clears throat> but there's like a video i thought let's see what this fucking thing says Fix my teeth. is this just like a video of hers Cardi B is defending her claims of drugging and robbing men while working as a stripper, claiming she did it to survive. Is that Don Lamont? Is that all it has to say? That's, I'll read more. According to Uprock, let's just go to Uprocks then. Cardi B confessed that she used uh, to drug men and rob them, and people are having mixed reactions. Which... If this was a guy who was a male stripper who was, yeah, I used to, uh, I used to drug bitches so I could steal their purses. What you gonna do about it? Go fuck yourself. You know, like, it would be a totally different situation. It would be a totally different uh, outcome, right? But because she's a boss bitch and she does her thing and she fucking swangs her thing, she's it's okay. I mean, that's just it's it's a double standard. It's a double standard. Um baby please, I heard it's not the same as your southern neighbor. And she gets to be a Super Bowl halftime show. This is America. <laughs> Rob them of their innocence. Let's go. So basically, she got awarded like the opposite of Bill Cosby. She gives she gives them Jello snacks, putting pops out there slanging that. Can <laughs> Let's go. Cardi B is active on Instagram Live this week, and in one session, she revealed that she plans to write a book about her life. Things got more controversial, though, when she addressed how she felt about being unfairly targeted by her critics, discussing how she got to where she is today by herself. She at one point said about her days as a stripper, I had to go strip. I had to go. Oh, yeah. You want to fuck me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to this hotel. And I drugged dudes uh, up and I robbed them. That's what I used to do. And then here, this must be some people. Cardi B is an evil woman and a disgrace to humanity. How dare you rape anyone then cry for sympathy? I don't know. If, see, I don't know if she's raping bitches. But uh, following that admission, a lot of Twitter users have shared their thoughts about the situation, and many reactions are being posted with the hashtag Surviving Cardi B, <laughs> which is modeled after the Surviving R. Kelly docuseries. <clears throat> users have also brought up comparisons to Bill Cosby. Uh, have said that the response to this news could be more severe if Cardi was a man and calling for Cardi to be canceled. So maybe she was like prostituting. She was prostituting and then would rob people. That's awesome. Hey, sex workers need love too. This is funny too. If you guys have seen that fucking the baby was seen giving uh, away free tickets at the at, at the Cheesecake Factory because he can't sell no tickets. There was like so many jokes, like um, somebody was like, uh, I really just want to be alone and by myself. That's why I'm going to the, <laughs> I'm going to the, the baby show, which was very funny to me at the time. Um, about the National Sex Offender Registry, once the offender's information is entered into the databases accessible to every accredited police agency in Canada, the public does not have access to the registry. Interesting. So they do protect the identity. They, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Yes, my child. Yes, Zippy Zipper. Did you need something? Can I turn some water into wine for you? Uh, the baby better not start beef with 50 cents. Otherwise, he'll buy the first 15 rows of the baby. <laughs> he would, too. How does vodka sound? Um, gross. Cardi B admitted to drugging, raping, and robbing men, but people are defending her either because she's a woman, they're using childhood trauma as an excuse... They're 
a stan or they think it's an attempt to defame her. Bitch, please. She told herself, arrest her. I can't believe Cardi B openly admits she drugged and raped and stole money. I want to see the people who are um, who are defending her. I grew up poor and in the hood. I was I never robbed or raped or drugged a man. Stop using the hood as an excuse. You're just a, a trash individual. Garbage. <laughs> Cardi B can't, but she wasn't canceled. Yes, Lord, I'm in need of that wine for bed. Yeah, I feel you. Oh, I see what you said. I see. I get it. Bon Bon. I'm an idiot. I forgot. Blueface was poorly arrested for attempted murder. Yeah, we saw that. Despite the backlash, there are those who say Cardi B shouldn't be compared to a serial abuser and pedophile like Kelly. All right. Beloved, I never said her actions weren't criminally punishable. R. Kelly is gross and in no way, shape, or form should a serial abuser or pedophile be compared to Cardi B or someone like her. Last, Sandra Bland. Um... These conclusions y'all be reaching here. Okay, maybe not as bad, but fuck out of here. Say, let Cardi B live. Yeah, of course, people are going to always. Cardi B took to Instagram a few days ago to respond to criticism and her occur trademark paperwork. She said, while I'm still here, I'm going to secure all the fucking bags. Although detractors believe Cardi shouldn't claim ownership over the word that she didn't initially popular lie, popular lie, popular, popular lie, rise, popularize. Jesus. <sighs> so there you go. Oh, there's comments. Man, all the fellas defending this shit is hilarious. And you wonder why the courts never side with you when you want to see your kids equal rights investigate the bra. <laughs> <laughs> two months later she was clapping them cheese and moving moving on freedom of choice but no power or accountability do you know what they say birds of a feather protect one another well yeah and that's what's interesting about this whole balenciaga thing right it seems like a lot of people are sort of coming out and it's a very strange thing uh that's happening savage first count i agree this is savage. Sounds about right. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you'll always be garbage. <laughs> I love that. Uh, the really shocking thing is that people are shocked that Cardi B is a garbage person. <laughs> Wait, when did she rape them? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It sounds like she used invitations to have sex to orchestrate robberies. It seems like a lot of people grasp for something that isn't there. She didn't. People are just grasping at straws. Find a double standard. Reply, the, re rape their wallet. <laughs> That's true. They, she did rape them. The rape is that someone who unknowingly drugged doesn't have the ability to offer consent. The, it's the law in 50 states. Hmm. Um, drug facilitated sexual assault. But that's that's if you drug them, right? Um, don't get me wrong, it's totally fucked up what she did, and I'd love to know the statute of limitations on that kind of thing. I think when the word rape is used to describe something other than sexual assault, even though the dictionary does have multiple definitions, it further complicates the discussion around and already say it's words, man. That's what it's that's what they're there for to describe situations. So wait, I want to see what this is. Drug facilitated sexual uh, assault. A sexual assault, rape, or otherwise carried out on a person after the person has become intoxicated due to being under the influence of mind-altered substances, such as having consumed alcohol. Okay, yeah, I get that. 75% of all acquaintance rapes involve alcohol and or drugs. Drugs, when used with or without alcohol, result in a loss of consciousness. Okay. So it does seem like penetration or something's involved where, you know, someone's getting diddled. Uh, what is it? I doubt she mounted the knocked out man she drugged and robbed. Yeah, I, that that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think she's out there like, like, yeah, I'm going to get this dick now. I got their wallet, now I'm going to get this dick. <laughs> I got the wallet, now I'm going to get this dick. I got the wallet, now I'm going to get this dick. Got the wallet, y'all. Now I'm going to get that dick. I got his wallet, y'all. And now I'm gonna grind on that wood. Grinding on that wood. Yeah. It's like grinding on a chewed up piece of gum, bitch. 
fish. Let's go. Yeah, he ain't even hard. I'm gonna just roll up on this shit, bitch. Got him for the wallet, now I'm getting for the dick. Get him for the wallet, now I'm getting for the dick. Get him for the wallet, now I'm getting for the dick. Dick, 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 dick. Okay. What? Um, okay, there it is. <laughs> I'm not saying, uh, wait, 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 wait. uh, do you, uh, I'm not saying anything, but there might be on X video. Oh shit. I might go see that shit. And you wonder why no one in power wants to talk about Epstein's black book. Truth. Um, bro, I know the guy personally who has the book of Epstein catching a predator. Ben have the, that book. Ben Shapiro. <laughs> get him for the money, then get him for the dick. I mean, if she wanted to like, prostitute herself you get the dick and then drug like i don't know i i don't see, I, I do get what you see I, I i agree with mag seven here yeah if she had sex with them which the quote in the post doesn't mention right um i think what is being asked is that it doesn't sound it doesn't sound based on what's written here that cardi b raped them she said she'd fuck them but instead, she drugged them and then robbed them. She didn't drug them, fuck them, and then rob them. <laughs> or at least that's what it reads like. <laughs> right. Or maybe she did. Maybe she did. Maybe she dropped some, gave them drugs, and they were like, yeah. And then they banged, and they passed out and took their thing. Maybe that. Sounds like she knocked them out, robbed them, that's it. What am I missing? Yeah, don't get me wrong, drugging and robbing people should be absolutely get her in trouble, but the article and her quote just mentioned that she used the invitation of sex and never said anything about her actually assaulting them once she was once they were drugged. Lots of Twitter remarks seem to think that she sexually assaulted them though. Good thing she ain't white, man. <laughs> Good thing she ain't a white man right here. That there it is right there. That is true. AK. He knows. <laughs> Good thing she ain't a white man. <laughs> Molly Crew never a drug assault anybody. Yeah, unfortunately. Anyways, so kind of going back to where we're at with uh, Miss Kesha. Um, it's not a great look, I would say, for her to be. You know, she she said that she didn't. He didn't do it under oath. You know, she lied on Katy Perry. Um, and not to, and, and I don't even want, it's not even worth bringing up, but, uh, you know, she didn't report it right afterwards, but you know, that is, I'm going to smoke a fatty and run into town for a beer later, butt sluts. Let me know what you think about, oh, oh yeah. Hold on. Naders. Let's look at it. My ADHD is calling me. Get out of here. Maybe later. I don't know. Not now. Stupid. Is it Jenna? Oh, hey, Jenny. Jenny popped in. Uh, selfies. <laughs> Jenny. Oh, that does count as a selfie. Oh, shit. She's out here partying. Damn, that's tight, Naders. Damn, let's go. That's woo time. Amazing. And we'll, we'll give this a reply. Look, I have some unsavory pictures of me out there from when I'm drunk. One in particular, I am mounting my dog with my ass hanging out. Not a good look, Mike. Not a good look. Oh, I like the tribute. I do too. That's tight. That's really dope. Look at the little look. Oh, it's Santa's seven. <laughs> look, he even has a little. Well, I don't know what that is. A mistletoe or something. He's being led around by shrooms. That's nice. It's a tie dye Christmas party. I think it counts. I agree. It does count. It looks good. 
It's good. Now that's a freaking Christmas sweater. That's where you want to go to the forest, take shrooms, sh and shot down a Christmas tree. End up finding out that you killed your best friend once you come out of the jail. Oh, Jesus. That that turned dark real quick. Same old. <laughs> but hey, that's the theme of today's show, I guess. She was an adult when she made that statement. Now, we know that sexual assault survivors do tend to say, no, it didn't happen before they come forward with their claims, but it's still very tough for her to overcome. Is it a problem for her that she apparently never went to law enforcement and reported it? I think that's less of a problem. We know that most rape victims don't go to law enforcement, and she did bring these claims forward with her lawyer in these actions. The bottom line, I mean, you see all these celebrities, and they're saying, free Kesha, and they're very sympathetic to her and her claims, but she is free to record as long as she stays with Sony. I mean, right. if, if these allegations were proven, if she ultimately prevailed at trial, would that be enough to get her out of her contract with Sony? You know, I, I think it's a winning point for Sony that she does not have to work with Dr. Luke anymore. And they point out that pursuant to the contract, they've lived up to their end. They've spent millions of dollars promoting her music. She's free to work with somebody else. It's a big company. They want to promote her music. Sony wants to make money. Kesha wants to make money. Sony wants to go forward with her. Well, we'll see what happens. The court of public opinion is certainly in full swing. A lot swing. of girl power supporting her. Yeah. There you go. Um, you know, and so... The whole thing, again, that kicked off this whole free Kesha thing over the weekend, again, is Kim Petras, who um, I guess she loves J.K. Rowling and then denounced J.K. Rowling, and now she loves Dr. Luke, but she's not backing down. So, you know, I, I, I don't blame Kim Petras. I don't, I don't hate her. I don't blame her for staying with it, but, you know, whatever. Uh, those, uh, that makes a lot of sense.